Welcome to part 29 of Skies of Arcadia. If you remember last time, everything went wrong. In this part, it gets even worse. <laughs> so not everything went wrong. Yep, but first we have to uh, finish the Moonfish situation here. Hi. We have two more to give back here to the ship deck. We need to moon finish the, the yep. This bird's gonna explode, isn't it? Everything has to go wrong. I was kind of waiting for it to transform into this huge majestic bird. I'm like, maybe it just looks ugly until the final form. But I can see at least getting the uh, the second to last moonfish totally worth it. Because he coughs off some really good items, especially during the later part of this. It coughs up the best weapon Whoa. for Ika, best weapon for Drachma, and the best weapon for Enrique. So two weapons we can't use. Yeah. So here's the final one. What will his final form be? Just burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. Yay, my friend, we can eat him now. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun. <laughs> He's a little angel. Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> I just want to hug him. Oh, I look ridiculous. Evolution's a joke. Maria looks kind of sad. See, the, here's the weird thing about him. Now that he's built like this, he can fly. His little wings. Not look like much, but they're powerful. The bird hasn't said anything. She just decided he has wings. He wants to leave now. <laughs> look, we need you to move out, like, right now. You're way too big for the ship. <laughs> That's the first time he's had a frowny face. We're <laughs> <laughs> sinking right now. I really wanted to eat him. Uncle Doctor Man. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Thank you for wiping out the population of moonfish from the world. They were ugly. So, you find out that Piccolo is a bird from the moon. <laughs> huh? And he ended up on Earth, and he now misses his family and friends. So he must fly home. It's so emotional. <laughs> this mission's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> he will go to the moon. He will go into the space, and he will die. Fly, majestic moonbird. Kind of wish it was like the killer whale from South Park, where it's like he's gone home. He's just dead on the moon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping once he started flying off the ship, he just immediately falls straight down. Vomits like a meteor-sized hairball. <laughs> it starts going through the atmosphere. This would be a great time for Piazza to come back and just flies her ship into him. Bye -bye. <laughs> I was thinking Piazza just dives in and cuts the thing. <laughs> what, was... yang, 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 what yang. sort of hell have we wrought? <laughs> I will now be the new ruler of the Silvites. <laughs> I'm going to go get my own pirate ship. I'm going to be a rent pirate. This is where the anime ending credits start to show up. <laughs> oh God, Stupid the sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Transparency? Wow. So we end up earning the Moon Hamacho Discovery. And even the Discovery is like, holy shit, you found it. You prove this stupid thing is real. We have to pay you for this. This is hilarious. <laughs> this is what I live for. So if we talk to him immediately afterwards, we trigger another cinematic. This only happens after we beat Piastle for the fourth time. Here comes the meteor hairball. Hi. Oh, hey, it's been a while. I wasn't surprised in the least. <laughs> yep, and she never left. <laughs> She's sitting there just complete bum. You guys have like beans or anything? 
grown a beard. You could have changed clothes. <laughs> you could have at least ditched the raptor feet. <laughs> He's dead. Angel of death, sorry. I mean, looking at how the Maria's dress too, she's kind of dressed goth as well. Yeah, I was going to say, the similarities are kind of there. It's just not noticeable until they're together. <laughs> what are you looking at? I saw something stupider than you fly away. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's great. That doesn't offend me at all. With no idea of wins. If only I had a sister. If only I could eat 50 moonfish and then grow wings. Pigtails turn into wings. Yeah. Yeah, I guess someday you'll meet your sister. Hopefully she's not a total weirdo freak. <laughs> it's emotional. Maybe one day she'll have clothes. Yeah. I imagine my sister is fully dressed at all times. <laughs> Keep dreaming, kid. <laughs> the bird is like swallowing the moon. No wonder you're watching that. That's actually terrifying. So Duck wasn't there, but he still knows that happened. <laughs> he was watching in the window. <laughs> Just facing his little... <gasps> <gasps> what are you doing to my daughter? Or maybe Maria, despite never talking, can explain things verbatim. Something tells me that Piastel never left. She's just kind of attached to the underbelly of the ship with her shoes. Trying to open the door, but raptors ironically can't. <laughs> Please don't do that. God, why? <laughs> <laughs> you finished your job. Vulcan nerve pinch. <laughs> Vice crumples. I like how they're just like, hey, uh, Piastol's looking for redemption. Maybe Ramirez is. You're like, <laughs> fat chance. He's dead. Uh... <laughs> no. So. We need to go back to uh, Dengro Island. Back to exactly where we were uh, when Gregorio died. Which means we gotta go down that thing again. But I do a little bit of editing to help progress things a little bit. Do so you just want to hold down circle and slide down? Yes. yes. And I want, like, Bloodborne where my head hits against the bars. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> And I was reminding myself about how I like games' tiny details. I love that. <laughs> was that really a thing? I thought someone said that was, like, somewhat doctored. But I don't own Bloodborne, so I can't say for sure. Only one way to find out. Spend $500. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we passed the area that we actually need to get to. Remember when we went over to find that engine, there was that huge path that led to that just outdoor dock that we just walked right by? We we'll want to go that way this time. Luckily, enemy saturation at this point is very low. It's because the Armada's gone and left. Well, this is still under the control of the Armada. Hmm. And we can also assume that Galcian and Ramirez are on their way here to awaken Zelos. And bring up the island of Soltis. <laughs> but they're taking their precious time. They're baking a cake. Ramirez has got his face in his hands. Why must you do this every <laughs> damn day? It soothes me. It's hard being evil. I need a hobby. Cake time. 
<laughs> He's cooked cakes every day, but every single one of them just looks terrible. <laughs> they're delicious, but they look hideous. No, they're not that delicious. <laughs> they just... This one looks like Matthew McConaughey. It's just mushed <laughs> up. <laughs> We're going to take our little uh, elevator in a very precarious where we could fall down and die sort of situation. Elevator goes up. <laughs> Breaks in half. Well, good. All right, we'll be there in seven days. Don't be bright, I book, Gilder. I knew this was the right way! <gasps> oh! <laughs> How the f. Donkey Kong was waiting for us. <laughs> hey, baby. Ah! <laughs> the same reaction every time. <laughs> I feel like at this point, upon hearing that, Gilder would just pull out his gun and shoot him. <laughs> He's like, hey, beep. Falls off the side. Why didn't we do that before? I remember last time we fought him, he mentioned, hey, I didn't have my weapons or equipment. Now he does, so we get a full powered Vagoro. It's a baseball bat. Sorta. Ping, 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 ping. This is not truly really unusual to a lot of the other fights. Honestly, not that difficult at this point of the game. He does not cast spells. He's all about heavy hits. So for support characters, you do want to block a lot, especially with Fina and Aika, because Vigor can do a lot of damage. If you do need them on healing duty, just wait until it's important to do so. But in the meantime, Gilder and uh, Vice can definitely handle a lot of the impact. Uh, if we only had someone that could help defend us against physical attacks, like Enrique. Actually, um, Gilder has a pretty nice little technique for that that we'll use later in the game. Also, I like how his gun is called the Gilder Special. We got, we actually have to use the, uh... You notice that I was able to actually turn the camera around and look at the gun that way. It kind of, it works well for that, for Gilder, just because he hides the weapon behind his head. This should work. Gilder becomes the best tank in the game because of the way I build him. He, not for damage, but just he can soak a lot of hits. This is his primary special attack. Oh, that's not a baseball bat. It's a bazooka. It's both. Ta-da, I think. Why? Let's <laughs> 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 imagine holding up like a Wily e. Coyote sign. Like, come on. Mother. Or not, Mother, you evil. <laughs> Pupil. <laughs> so at this point, we're going to be actually using a Gilder as more of a item-based healer, while Vice does his usual thing of murdering everything. We never did get him any more uh, seeds, did we? Not yet, at least. Let's see how much damage this one does. Protective best friend's wrath. <laughs> One third health. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. Break my skull, Jesus. All right, back to neutral. That was the best response from Vigoro. <laughs> <laughs> Super attack bonk. <laughs> Also, neat little flourish there. Whenever he gets hit, he just kind of like wipes off his shirt, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm used to being hit. My real one is bigger. <laughs> Seriously, why is this up? <laughs> <laughs> why Fina? I don't get it. Because it's Fina. Still blind, huh, Gilder? I'm so glad I'm being useful right now, guys. Looking back and forth, kind of pissed off. Really, I'm so happy that I'm in this group. Friendship forever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey! 
Critical hit, I actually followed through with the swing. <laughs> Yeah, as you can tell, he's, he's not too difficult. He can take care of him in a few turns. I'm just pondering whether I want to murder him or murder him hard. Ah, murder him hard. <laughs> I'm a little bummed out because he said I didn't have my special equipment. I was expecting like a full suit of armor, like exploding fists. <laughs> That'd actually be pretty cool. It's just a, it's just a baseball bat. It's a club with a cannon built into it, which is actually pretty cool in design. Eh. Oh, I lost again. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's unfortunate. Oh, oh I landed on my cod piece. He's now stuck in the floor. <laughs> that was fun. For once, that's appropriate. You deserve the celebration animation. Fina look, just looks at Ika, I swear to God. <laughs> He shot you, Fina. I could have got some of the worst of it. I'll give this to Vagoro. He's a combat-based respect guy, so now that we've beat him, he's just like, you're actually kind of cool. I'll let you go, because you're awesome. I guess you're Sugoi. <laughs> Suge! <laughs> Kakui job, senpai. Also, Vigoro's willing to admit defeat when it comes to Red, because the strongest man deserves the finest woman. So Vice deserves you. I don't deserve you. Vice beat me, not you. Which is kind of true. <laughs> it's like, I like Vika. Wow, maybe if you weren't such an asshole, things might have worked out. <laughs> this is a complete 360 of what I was expecting from Vigoro. 180. 360 would... Yeah, I always have to point that out. That's <laughs> Everyone always says that I'm like... Um, you mean he's back to normal? So he decides he's gonna become an air pirate. See you guys. Okay. Great. We're gonna see him again someday. Goodbye. I wasn't able to figure out how to do it in this game, but I know in the original you could actually fight Vagoro again as an air pirate, and his costume is super dumb. <laughs> oh man, now I'm gonna have to Google that after the video. I know there's a video of the fight. It's actually, he is stronger and he has his own crew, but it's like, he looks dumb in it. He looks like he belongs in Girl Lagon. <laughs> Say hello to the Skies of Arcadia Secret, where we play as Vigoro. <laughs> hey, baby. Skies of Vigoro. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gotta make that box art. <laughs> his ship and just the front of it is just his face. Hell yeah. So he's basically the Mujo of this game. He is the Mujo of this game. I mean, he even has a cog piece, so yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mujo, that's just tight shorts. That's all yeah. natural. <laughs> he didn't actually need the cog piece, he just had a cog. <laughs> all right, it took us a week for the elevator to get to the elevator, now the elevator's gonna take a week to get down. <laughs> I've made so many cakes. Ice creamy cakey cake. <laughs> I can't get the ice cream part down. This one looks like Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Who? <laughs> he came to me in a dream. <laughs> he was very disappointed in me. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I'll follow you for the rest of my days, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Never said I won't regret it. All right. Now we can stop this whole horrible thing from happening. All right. What am I doing? <laughs> Pretty much a straight path from here going forward. So who's next on the chopping block? Oh, I thought we were going to a boss arena. Damn. Can't run in the middle because we'll hit these things for no reason. How did they build this? And how did they get it below the clouds? It's the Sylvites. Valua didn't build this. This is Sultus, actually. But Sultus is currently under the clouds because it got destroyed by the rains of destruction. Oh, right. Well, I mean, like, the drill, at least. Technology? Moonstones? Valua has a lot of money. They just kind of went bankrupt again. Moonfish? Moonstone fish can't fire mid moons moons <laughs> glitch glitch glitch. 
Welcome to the Black Omen, I mean the Sultus. So here's the center of Sultus, where it contains a sealed away Zelos. We didn't think we were going to see you down here. Jinkies. Also, as you notice, Zelos isn't that big. Oh, that's because it's not... I mean, it makes sense. It's not like a combatant. It's just a thing that will summon meteors. So why would it have a shape? Think that for now. That's fine. Oh. My reign of destruction. <laughs> it just starts raining cash on them. <laughs> Take that. Uh. Huh? Oh. Did you ever think where that first boss fight we had with a giant robot came from? Remember, try to think of something. We were on Shrine Island. We fought a version of this that was rusty. What does that tell you about Shrine Island? Shrine Island is the single piece left of Soltis. Uh. Oh. Like, I recognize the boss, but I didn't come to that conclusion. So this is basically the case. That thing that we fought was a rusty version of a golem made by the Silver Society. That's why it was weaker. We're fighting one that's still alive. That's why this one is stronger. It's a good thing we are too. And we have guns. The fight actually runs the same way. And this time we have four characters versus two. So I think we'll be fine. That's still pretty cool though. As I mentioned, they don't do anything without a purpose in this game, which is highly appreciated by me. At least nothing that isn't just world building. Right. So the fight goes very similar. He uses target search as a warning before he uses his laser cannon. As long as you block before that occurs, you'll be fine. And plus now that we have such a huge SP gauge, we'll be able to use Pirate's Wrath and take this guy out no problem. That's kind of interesting. This is effectively like a way to say, hey, look how strong you've gotten. Time to do the first boss fight again. Yep. I like it when they do stuff like that. It's also kind of the same with the Balter ship fight as well. Balter ship? Which one was that? The ship fight we had with Balter the Black Pirate. Oh, yeah, Blackbeard. <laughs> Where we killed him in one hit. Yeah. So Aura of Denial, a great ability for this part of the game. It blocks adverse effects from hitting us. Your petty little tricks won't work on us. He just waggles his finger. Nuh uh. <laughs> I shot the sky. Gilder the sassy. <laughs> he is pretty sassy. Just look at him. <laughs> we have a lot of SP gauge because we waste one turn blocking, so we have a lot. I can almost see that being a good tactic in some places where you need as much SP as you can get. Well, it's it's definitely a good strategy when the attack pattern of a boss is predictable. Because he gives a fair warning before his strongest attack, you know when to do things. So what's Aura of Denial going to do? Like, does he have status effects? I thought he was just raw damage. There are some status effects this guy can cause. Because keep in mind, some of the status effects, for example, are basically permadeath. Like, the whole ultimate death ability is considered an adverse effect, hypothetically. That's why that uh, little tombstone appears upon you when you get instant death. Ah. Oh. So, using that can actually block the effects of Eterni and Eternum, that kind of stuff. Okay. There's sometimes in a debate between who play in this game, especially since a lot of the later enemies can cast that murder spell. See, this is the one that can kill you in one hit, but not this case. Blank. Oh, there See, it, it almost, it would have worked, but I had that working. So, as I mentioned, there's been a debate where people have debated whether Delta Shield or Aura of Denial is better. Because the main reason you would even use, more, more, more often than not, you'd be using Delta Shield is to block adverse effects. They're both good, but I like Delta Shield a little bit more because it's one SP cheaper. But the trade-off is you can't cast heal spells on yourself. With Aura Denial, you can't. 
I think it's also a matter of fact that a good 80% of the game you have Fina, or Fina, Ika, and Gilder's just off doing his own thing. You mean 100%? Like, Ika and Vice and Vice and Ika are the guaranteed they're going to be in every single fight scene. Yeah, let me rephrase that. For 80% of the game, you don't have Gilder. Right. It's not a matter of which is better, it's a matter of what you have at your disposal. That's why I always say Delta Shield is the best ability in the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Drill Nose. Drill Nose is very useful. It's very annoying when enemies use it, though. <laughs> it's like, I'm glad I wasted your time. Things are about to go to shit now. Time for my ultimate cake. There he is. Zealous. This one looks like death. I didn't want it. <laughs> Preheat oven to kill. <laughs> or to 400 degrees. So, they're raising the continent now. Well, if we stay in here, we're probably going to die. So... Let's get out of here. Time to run. I'm glad we wasted our time. Let's get out. <laughs> See what, girl? I don't wanna. <laughs> I wanna cut it in half somehow. We we'll just fly through space to slash him. It worked last time. It seems like Vice just wanted to make the order to go back to Dangrel Island himself. And we're getting in control where everything is going wrong. We didn't do a very good job of dealing with this problem. <laughs> but we did take two weeks to get there with the elevator. You're very hungry. Well, I'd like to point out hypothetically we could have just landed our ship on the other side. Just a thought. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> Except we wouldn't have our great conclusion with Vagoro. <laughs> no, he'd probably just stand on this side like they're gonna be here any minute now. We're already dealing with this. We didn't fight him until we're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> My ambush failed! <laughs> You're no longer an admiral, Ralph. <laughs> Shit. Just because I didn't play the original version of Skies of Arcadia, one thing I did here was that because the Dreamcast version was a two-disc game, they were able to actually fit more audio bits into the game. So there was actually missing music in the Skies of Arcadia Legend version, or at least they weren't as matching quality to the Dreamcast. I did not notice this necessarily because the music is still good, but I think I've heard that there's some missing tracks in Legends. Because it's only on one disc. Kind of makes sense because not only is Skies of Arcadia Dreamcast 2 disc, the uh, GameCube disc itself is smaller, so it makes sense that even if there was better CD tech, there's less uh, real estate or space on there. And it always comes down to the one thing people tend to get rid of is not visuals bases, or, but it's always audio bases. Because less people notice it. And people in the thread were pointing out the music is more compressed in the GameCube version. Yeah. Never noticed. It's still good, so... Like, I wasn't aware that this was a two-disc game, but it kind of makes sense because the battle music changed, like, somewhere in part 27, 28, and I noticed it, but I wasn't aware that that was a disc transition. It's also the combat situation base. If you notice when we fought Vigoro, it was actually playing Valua's theme as a combat theme. Ah. Vice, what are you doing? I'm gonna pull you back! <laughs> I'll be your beast of burden! We're walking! What do you think we're doing? We're walking on sunshine! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Look how far we have to go. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I'm old, guys, come on. <laughs> I'm aging as we stand here. Not gonna lie, Vice is actually pretty smart here because what are your options? Sit here and starve? Wait till the island breaks? Or just fucking run? Well, this is not a starving situation. This is more like an island's rising from the ground and going to kill us situation. That too. We don't have time to argue. Well, 
Look at that nice layer of mud. <laughs> it cleans up good. You know, maybe I'm feeling young again. <laughs> Take me now. <laughs> Come to me. You more clearly want him. Go. Thank you. I get the wing woman. And he falls to his death. I was actually <laughs> expecting the <laughs> face flat. Uh oh. <laughs> He's here, Galsim. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, run for it. Are you actually running here? Yep. Wow. <laughs> this is not fair, guys. I do like the camera angle. It gives a sense of vastness for this. And also, they were very nice about this, because obviously, we could run the entire way. But I think it was on, you will get the point eventually, sort of situation. <laughs> yeah. huh. It just goes, okay, etc. You're still on the rail, get off. <laughs> what, we are? <laughs> we're on solid air, though, we're fine. Take me now, Vice! I'll take you now to- no, no. Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Graceful. The majestic Vice takes flight. Not now, Vice, not now. <laughs> you know, this game subverts a lot of cliches. I was expecting Vice to make it look like he didn't make it but he actually managed to grab onto a cliff and he's just fine. No, <laughs> they didn't do that. He just makes it in the most awkward way. Yep. So this is such a big event, the entire world feels it. Sorry, it was just my stomach. Ah, ha, ha. Ah. We're gonna die. <laughs> no, Shrine Island. I think. Yep. Hey. Oh. So. <laughs> That's clever. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to point out something, and one of the commenters noticed this, and I was hoping at some point you would get this, Thorn. At the very beginning of the LP, when Shrine Island appeared, I jokingly mentioned this is the last dungeon of the game. I wasn't lying. Wow. Oh my god. That's so cool. You're acting like I was supposed to get that. Well, no, but I just wanted to point it out. <laughs> Tiny island. And it just fits in so perfectly. Like it was meant to be there. I like how the island that's been down underneath this layer of mud and destruction is totally pristine. The one that's been up in a clear blue sky forever is all green and grody. It's the power moonstones, man. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're gonna attack it then. Here we come. And it just forms a hand that swats you out of the air. Even better. You know how you mentioned once you see the Star Wars allegories, you just don't stop seeing them? Yep. This is the trench run. Sorta. It looks exactly like the surface of the uh, Death Star when they're doing the trench run. See, we're trying to use the knife. It didn't work this time. Ah. Got a force field, you idiot. So here's the interesting thing about uh, Soltis. They need Soltis to activate the Reigns of Destruction because Soltis, the island itself, is a giant satellite dish. 
red satellites in uh, the sky. That's one of the things, isn't it? Not in the case of these guys. That was a weapon created by the Red Empire back in the day. Oh. That was a weaker version of what's going to go down right now. Pretty much. Valua could use a little rain. So if you want a good feeling that Galcian's a dick, he sent Beleza there to quote-unquote keep an eye on things going on. And also sit back Gregorio's body to there in an honorable way, but then does this. Wow. What a dick. <laughs> but also Enrique's there. Yeah, that was my thought, like, oh no, I'm gonna lose Enrique. Oh. They're gonna blow up the entire moon? No. Just make it angry. Yeah. God, we're so poor, I wish we'd die. Wish granted. Oh, the parties. <laughs> Money and subtle evil. Hmm. So, good girl Beleza is saving Enrique. I like her even more now. She's smart. This brings up another question, though. Where's Alfonso? Guess we're going to find out. About to get his ass kicked. But the real question, where's Antonio 3? <laughs> no! Antonio! We're gonna attack everything except Valua itself. Nope, they get it too. Oh, there it goes. Goodbye, everyone. It's like an encroaching death. You start from the outside and then you just slowly go in. Hang on, I got this. We'll create an invisible barrier. Save me, stick. <laughs> if only I listened to my son. That's who she reminds me of, Waluigi. I like how Fonz is like, fuck you, Empress, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, at least you're still in character. Yeah, right before he gets squished to death. Splat. Oh, wow. Wow. There goes. Empress, Alfonso, and everyone in Valua. I was like, damn, you're a good pilot, Beleza. <laughs> Please tell me we get her as a pirate crew member. Pretty much just need to get the timing right. I think the timing's right. <laughs> Looks like it. Drift! <laughs> he did half of that with his mouth closed. He is so evil. <laughs> also, he planned it accordingly. He basically destroyed Nazar's entire Navy force because they're the only group that can threaten him. Now that he's wiped out Valua, he basically controls the world now. Yeah. Under threat of reigns of destruction. That was may have been some accidental hindsight. And also, I think this is also Beleza's point of realizing that Galcian tried to have her killed. Oh, yeah. She may be gullible, but she's not dumb. 
And poor Enrique had worked so hard to try to save Valua, and there is no longer a Valua. Yeah, if only they had a competent leader. See, I, I, I imagine Enrique looking at this and doing that weird anticlimactic sob thing. He, he's keeping his composure surprisingly well. He's still pretty out of it, but he's not doing sob tears. I think he's more angry. It does fit within his character. I mean, it's it was, I like the change because he came off as such kind of a weak character at first, and he's developed over time into this character with a lot more strength. Everyone pretty much has. Vice has kind of always been strong, but everyone else has developed over time. Vice doesn't seem like a protagonist who evolves too much himself. He's more of a catalyst for other people around him to evolve. Pretty much. Mm, yeah. That's what I like about Vice a lot. He's not a naive character like they a lot of times give an these protagonist types. This is the, the meeting of what the hell are we going to do now? The meeting of... Mm, uh, the meeting of... Hmm. <laughs> this Moegi is here just because it's like, what happened to Enrique? And we don't know. We could just assume he's dead. This would be a perfect opportunity for Enrique to kick in the door. <laughs> Looking extra sexy. Fina, what are you doing with her boob? Making sure it doesn't faint. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that would keep me awake. Moegi, don't faint. <laughs> hey, did you mean me? <laughs> yes. I won't even give you a chance to mope a motherfucker. <laughs> I have a subordinate now. Yeah, a lot of people died. A lot of people die from now on in this game. <laughs> so you can tell he's using it as a bargaining chip. And now he's going to just travel around the world and just own it. He just wants power. That's his thing. He wants to control everything. talking about me <laughs> why is everyone else getting hugged but not me <laughs> even with the delphinus we cannot take out blue's empire unfortunately so even as powerful as that is shit damn it hey boy Beyblade. yes <laughs> the baby slams into his head ow <laughs> <laughs> Let her rip. <laughs> this is great. Oh, just wait. This part's fantastic. Dutch angle. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time, Vice. Deploys the fist. It's been a long angle, Vice. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine that Drachma didn't come here out of a sense of duty to help Vice. He's like, that thing just tried to sink me. I'm pissed. Guys, I think it's important we bring the Wu-Tang Clan together. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you from here, apparently. She's speaking it through a tin can. 
Gordo? Well, he has a ship, so... Really? Why not? He's a good guy now. And Sentai fixed his ship. Huh. Hey, sorry we stole your son. <laughs> it's alright, I'll just I'll get another orphan, it's fine. <laughs> you really want a weird one. Walter's helping us. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, good. You're here. We'll put you in front. He just admits I hate Gelsian more than I hate you. Yeah, we got the Tango on our side. The Rizza, the Jizza, old dirty bastard, inspected dick, you god, ghost face, killer, rape, call the chef. Wu Tang Clan, whatever. <laughs> Gelsion rules everything around me, and I ain't standing for it no more. <laughs> we have two boats, but we're staying on the one. Twins. Who else in the Wu Tang Clan is gonna join? Uh. Yo! Yo! <laughs> it's Red Man! You have earned a chin. <laughs> Dunn really does have a full crew of amazing chins. Thanks, Dad. He is kind of giving that look like, oh, Dad. <laughs> Plus, also, we have Gilder's ship and Drachma's ship. We have our own armada. No matter what you pick here, they're all good. I like that second option. Me too. I like which one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him wait. That's the power of leader. One more hurrah of the pirates versus the evil people. One last hurrah. Time to sleep. <laughs> One last hurrah. <laughs> Yay! Oh, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> This is a weird sleeping angle, admittingly. <laughs> I'm Vice. Ooh. Uh, what? What? Nice. What? No! 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 Oh. You did the cool thing! I respect that. Also, remember when we first met her when she was in disguise, she admitting to a man that doesn't love her back? It's all coming back. That's creepy. <laughs> oh, but that's worrying. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh -huh. Oh, you better come back and join the Blue Rogues. Goodbye. You buy sexy Emerald. You buy sexy paint in my ass. <laughs> So now we can spend some time as one final night before, again, the night before the storm, talking with Fina and Ika. Do you only get one choice? You can talk to both of them. Okay. Fina you'll find at the very top here in the front near the flag. Ika is at the top of the elevator. We'll first talk to Fina. Gotta admit, in between these two episodes, Blaze has really shot up as like one of my favorite characters. Yeah, I like Beleza a lot. Like, I thought it just kind of ended at the desert, but then she's just like, I'm going to do all these cool things now. She seems like the only competent ad admiral at this point. Pretty much.
I don't get what it's like to lose people. As a hero, I don't lose people. I will learn how to dance. See, I was mentioning allegories to other things. I think showing all those ships is also build up to this point, which is shipping. <laughs> this is what a Siamese twins like. <laughs> Impressed? You ruined it, Vice. You said something. It's cutscene night, it'll last forever. <laughs> Three minutes later. <laughs> she vanishes. Let's talk to Ika now. Internet, pick your ship. The rest of the LP has been recorded, so it won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Fake decisions. <laughs> I have my own opinion on it. <laughs> Viewer input doesn't matter. Hey. I've always liked their relationship, too. Yeah. Like, it's a thing you don't really see n nowadays. Just like, you know, a casual, friendly relationship between a male and a woman. It doesn't have to be romantic, it doesn't have to be platonic, it's just... Oh. You're cool. It also doesn't require development, it's developed. <laughs> yeah, that too. They've known each other a long time, so it's more it's a lot more comfortable than you see a lot of these relationships are in a lot of these games. But also, I like Aika because despite a lot of her optimism and energy, she does occasionally, especially only really in front of Vice, show a little bit of tenderness, a little bit more vulnerability, and it makes the most sense that way. But she's not also willing to drop that barrier down too often. Characterization is a really good thing with this game, and it shows here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I woke up the whole island. <laughs> Hey, that's my line. <laughs> that cold wind is like, what the hell are you doing? I like their different ways they approach that. She she's kind of like, hey, hey, yeah, great times. Walks away and he's just like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all right, we experienced our last night with all of our friends right before a incoming battle of definite epic scope. We have a couple of things we need to finish shopping-wise within the Crescent Isle itself, but after that, it is straight into the final battle. That build-up was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was admittedly a little cliche, but wow, I've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> for so long. Well, yeah, the best part is when they just show all those ships, because at first it's just like, I don't know what to do, and then you bring in the entire Mean Street gang with you, and you're just like, <laughs> oh shit. You also kind of needed that, too. Your fucking island gets shot to shit, you watch a Sylvite die, you watch entire Valua die, you needed that pick-me-up. Mm-hmm. That was a great way to build that up. And it's a good way to show of all you've accomplished so far. That, too. I mean, I knew Gordo was like, oh, I'm not going to be a bad pirate anymore, but then he does, like, okay, I'll help. You were cool. He has a pretty cool ship, so I, I think it'll work out well for him. I'll sit on that island! <laughs> it won't stand a chance. It won't be able to stand, period. But yeah, you could tell that one that one part of the night thing was just like, hey, you, you know that despite the fact that they haven't really shown much in the form of romanticism, you know you guys mentally were picking one with the other. So what you, you get to pick between the two. We won't force it. Now, is that an actual decision or is it just like, it's just a little extra fluff? I won't spoil it because it's, because it kind of it goes into how the game ends. It it does a lot come to how you interpret, okay, and how the thing ends. And honestly, it leaves a lot to the imagination to where there isn't a right answer. There isn't a wrong answer either. 
All right. Personally, I'm more a fan if Vice ended up with Ica because I think they have a very good relationship with one another, but that's just my personal opinion. It would make the most sense considering how long they've been together. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fina is basically for those who like the traditional adventure of hero saves the day, gets the girl, everything goes well. But I also like the fact that Fina is not like a traditional helpless princess type. They played it up a little bit at the beginning when she had to get when she was saved. But then the more the game progressed, the more she started showing her own internal strength. And it started to focus like on her being the motivational factor for what was going to happen. So she moved from kind of a weaker character to a stronger one. The, as again, the development in this game has been pretty spot on. And again, it's one of the reasons why this is my favorite game. Yeah, I really wish I played this as a kid. This game would have been my jam. <laughs> After this, we got one major final battle of ridiculously epic proportion. It's going to be great. 